the welcome to this very brief ceremony at which the Republic of China, Taiwan, will be presenting to the government of St. Lucia uh, the first tranche uh, for a project uh, in the swimming sector. And at this point, I would like to welcome the Honorable Minister for Youth Development and Sport, the Honorable Sean Edward, to give us an overview of this project. Let me say today is a very historic day for the sport of swimming and for sports in St. Lucia. When this government came into office in 2011, one of the first things we attempted to do in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports was to improve on the existing sporting infrastructure in this country. And ever since 2011, we have spent millions of dollars in that respect. We've been in a position to light up playing fields. We've improved the surfaces of many of the community-based playing fields. And as we speak, three community pavilions are under construction in Larissus, in the Mabuya Valley, Canaries, and Ancillary. And today, we are here, as the Master of Ceremony would have said, to receive a check from the Taiwanese government that will be used to commence the construction of a 50-meter aquatic facility. For a number of years, St. Lucia has been participating in regional and international competition in the sport of swimming. But we do not have a facility owned by government in which we can prepare our athletes. And so, We've had to rely on a facility belonging to the Warrell family in Grizzly. And today I want to say a special thank you to the Warrells for the role that they played, or they have played, in the development of swimming in our country. Our fortunes regionally in the sport of swimming has not been what we really wanted it to be. But we noticed that our swimmers have been making strides in very recent times. I remember last year, after meeting the national team that went off to Aruba to compete in the Karifta Championships, I did say to the youngsters who were departing George F.L. Charles Airport that if anybody came back with a medal, the government would have gone out of the way to ensure that they got the, the welcome that they, would, that they these champions truly deserve. And so last year, they came from Aruba empty-handed as far as medals were concerned. However, all of the athletes that competed in Aruba last year were able to improve on their personal times. But this year in Barbados, not only did they come with medals, but we were able to take home six medals out of the Karifta Championships. And I want us to put our hands together for these young swimmers. Daniel Bobra was the first St. Lucian swimmer to represent our country at the Olympics. And I was fortunate I was fortunate enough to be in London to actually see Daniel in the, in the pool um, doing her thing for St. Lucia. But as I said, we're not where we want to be in the sport of swimming. But one thing that we are, we've been assured of is that our country has a lot of talent as it relates to the sport of swimming. And so the government, the prime minister in his foresight, <coughs> saw the need to establish a national aquatic facility that will cause this, the, the, the swimming talent of our country to come to the fore in a manner that would make us champions at the regional level. And of course, the ultimate goal of the ministry, and by extension, the government, is for us to have swimmers who would go to the Olympics and international championships and bring much needed pride and glory to that particular sporting discipline in our country. It would be remiss of me to just thank the government of the Republic of China and the Prime Minister for having sanctioned that tournament and the government of, of Taiwan for making the resources available. Without making the point that I do not believe a facility of that magnitude should only be used for competition. Every year, when young St. Lucians leave school and they, they, they go on vacation, we are always saddened by news of one youngster having met his or her death as a result of drowning. It is, it, it is well known that we are not very good swimmers, or we, we, we have not been taught the rudiments of swimming at an early age, at least as a life-saving skill. So I'm hoping that once that facility has been constructed and that the Swimming Association continues to develop programs that would cause swimming to grow as a sporting discipline, the facility will become available to the wider community 
where at a very early age, we can go into the primary schools and even the preschools to use that facility to teach our children the rudiments of swimming as a life-saving skill, even before we can introduce them to competition. I've also been told that there are possibilities of rehabilitation um, that will be available to the health sector. And so I'm hoping that the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will begin to forge partnerships with the hotel association so that persons can come to St. Lucia to use the pool um, as part of their, their rehabilitative care. Um, and St. Lucians too. So today, I just want to thank the Embassy of, of the Republic of China for making the resources available. And as I said earlier on, without the blessings and the sanctioning of the Prime Minister, that particular facility would not have been a reality. Um, we have invested very, very hev heavily in the sporting infrastructure of our country. And when we took to the campaign trail <clears throat> as a party in opposition, one of the things we said to the populace was that we were going to ensure that as much as possible, we provided homes for all the different sporting disciplines in the country. Today, the Mindufili Park is being used to, to house the Cricket Association. The Athletics Association has a room there. Um, the Football Association, the government has facilitated it tremendously in acquiring a building in Leclerc as FIFA Gold Project 1. So today, the Football Association has a home of, of its own. And I'm hoping that once that facility comes on stream, the St. Lucia Swimming Association will be able to find space in there um, to call home. So I'm extremely excited. I know this is just the presentation of the check to, com to signal the commencement of the project. And I'm sure that once the, the, the project comes to an end, um, we all will be more than ready to celebrate what I think will be a remarkable achievement, not just for the sport of swimming and for the infrastructural, infrastructural upgrade of facilities in our country, but I think this is going to be a flagship project that will add much value to the constituency of Grizzly and, of course, St. Lucia by extension. So once again, thanks to all the persons who, who <coughs> have played a role, um, at least at the design stage. And I'm extremely excited and I'm hoping that the project will be completed in due time and will be made available to the young swimmers of our country. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the session. It is a great pleasure to be here with you at this donation ceremony for the National Aquatic Center. It is my distinct honor on behalf of my government, Republic of China, Taiwan, to donate 1,055,290 ishi dollars and 54 cents to the government of St. Lucia as the mobilization fund for this program. I have learned that there are over 400 young people actively practicing competitive swimming. If swimming is made open as a sport to the public, I'm sure there will be a significant increase in the numbers participating as the facilities would be readily available to all. The swimming facility will be located at the Bose Zoo Sports Complex. It will consist of a competi competition pool. The pool will be 15 meters in length and in addition, extended by 15 meters to allow warm-ups and the beginner's training. A steel pool, a roof with blocks, a structure to house administration, gym, computer room, shop, cafeteria, toilets, changing rooms, and the public seating stands to accommodate 500 spect spectators. It will be a suitable place to host major swimming events. The outline of the pool is approved as an Olympic-sized swimming pool by FINA, International Swimming Federation. St. Lucia has been awarded the rights to host the Commonwealth Youth Games in 2017. It is to my knowledge that a total of 1,350 athletes and officials are expected to participate. St. Lucia will be known as a sports tourism destination. This facility can also contribute to the country's income as well as the citizens' health. This aquatic center will encourage St. Lucians to have a greater appreciation 
for the value of physical activity and the fact that it provides opportunity for enjoyment, challenge, self-expression, and communication. In closing, it is my firm belief that this significant and meaningful program will be another good example of our cooperation and further enhance the existing cordial relationship between our two countries. And I thank you. Your Excellency, today is a very exciting day for St. Lucia, but particularly the swimming fraternity. Athletes, parents, coaches, lifeguards, administrators, fans, and everyone who simply loves the water. We are one step closer to receiving what many have dreamt for for many decades. I am therefore quite pleased to receive this first tranche of grant funds from the Republic of China, Taiwan, on behalf of the government of St. Lucia to go towards the construction of what will become St. Lucia's new national aquatic center. Your Excellency, we have waited for this project with excitement and anticipation. Finally, through the aid of your government, we can commence what will certainly be a quantum leap for sports infrastructure in St. Lucia, but also for healthy living as well. I say this because swimming is more than just a sport. Being able to swim is a matter of life or death. And we have sadly seen over the years far too many unfortunate lives lost in our waters due to persons being unable to swim, unable to contend with the sea, whether it has fury or not. It is a shameful reality that despite being surrounded by the waters of the Caribbean and Atlantic, the vast majority of our population cannot swim or stay afloat in these waters. This we need to change. While infrastructure alone is not the answer, it is a major step in the right direction. Today's check of a little over one million Eastern Caribbean dollars allows for the commencement of works on what is a 12 million Eastern Caribbean dollar investment in swimming infrastructure. It is the first time that the government of St. Lucia would ever be investing in aquatic sports infrastructure. It comes at a critical time in the development of sports. Our swimmers are showing us their prowess tournament after tournament. Your Excellency, this $12 million project will realize the dream of Bosuju becoming a national sports center. Already, we have located there the Bosuju Cricket Grounds, which sees international level cricket, the Bosuju Indoor Sports Facility, and the Six Court National Tennis Center the latter being built through funding from your government. The proposed location is on approximately 2.5 acres of land immediately east of the Bosuju Cricket Grounds at the junction of the Bosuju and Comoret Roads. The land is currently owned by the National Lotteries Authority, thanks to the government of St. Lucia, and as such, no land acquisition is required. The proposed National Aquatic Center will provide St. Lucia with an Olympic-sized swimming pool and related support infrastructure. In fact, the proposed pool will be a 65-meter eight-lane pool with an adjustable bulkhead. While an Olympic standard pool is 50 meters, the additional pool space is being provided for warm-up, warm-down, and learn-to-swim programs. The current design envisages a 500-seat pavilion with support amenities for spectators and another building for facilities such as lockers, showers, a small gym, as well as administrative and tournament offices. What this means particularly for our swimmers is that they will now have facilities comparable to what exists in Barbados, Martinique, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, and Guadeloupe. It means that our swimming athletes, therefore, have the opportunity to practice better through longer laps. They can better prepare for tournaments. I have no doubt that the overall performance of our swimmers will only improve exponentially in the years to come. 
What this also means economically is that St. Lucia can now position itself strategically to capture new possibilities in sports tourism. There are, of course, the regional and tournaments, the regional and the tournaments which such a facility would leverage. There are the possibilities of attracting international athletes and teams to spend their winters here in training. Socially, it means that the St. Lucia Swimming Association must commit to ensure a major learn to swim program, starting with our youth, our schools, starting at a young age. We need more of our country to be competent in the water. Even for many jobs, swimming is a requirement, a necessary skill. And we need to get to a point where it is expected that the average St. Lucian can swim and then move on to the point where many more St. Lucians can save a life from drowning if needs be. I therefore challenge the various associations, the various relevant associations, to begin preparing for the advent of this facility and the opportunities that it brings. In comparison to many other sporting facilities, swimming facilitates generally require, may I repeat, swimming facilities generally require higher maintenance costs. It means that you must then begin to strategize a suitable and sustainable management model. However, I remind you that this must always ensure broad access to the population. It must be a facility for everyone, and you must consider what actions must be taken to ensure this. Swimming cannot be seen in the eyes of the public as a sport for the elites. So how you get people to take the plunge, how you get people to do their laps, to not fare the water is immensely important to the success of our National Society of Swimmers. This is a brave step we have embarked on, and I, of course, hope that this will not be the only public swimming facility to be built in this country. If only to ensure that our population can swim adequately, we must, therefore, explore future investments in Vieux in Soufre, and perhaps even in Denry Minister, as I am sure you would agree but all things in good time. So the ball is now in the court of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, in the court of the St. Lucia Amateur Swimming Association, and all other partners to ensure that this facility provides even more energy for swimming and safety in our waters. We are no longer treading. We are on the move. And so, Your Excellency, may I thank you and the Republic of China, Taiwan, on behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia for your country's commitment to our continued development. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you and wish you a wonderful and happy day. Thank you very much. <laughs>